All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Dennis Schultz. I am the executive director for the Blacks and Technology Foundation. If this is your first event with us, um, welcome. Uh, we try to provide resources and tools and support for primarily people of African descent in the tech industry. Um, our URL is blacksandtechnology.net. I'll post it into the chat for folks, if you're not members, to check us out. It's free to join, so we encourage you to uh, become members uh, and make sure you don't miss out on wonderful events like this. So uh, with that, I will introduce Daphne Harris, uh, who is joining us from scrum.org. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what it takes to be a professional um, scrum master or yeah, PS, did I, did I get the Professional that? scrum trainer. Trainer, trainer, yes. Uh, professional scrum trainer. And uh, this is definitely uh, a topic of uh, unique interest to me. You know, I recently transitioned from sales into uh, customer success and I uh, got my um, ITIL certification in the works and I'm looking at scrum as um, uh, a way to enhance my personal, um, you know, skill set. And um, yeah, I'm looking to learn as much as I can with, you um, uh, with the folks here. So Daphne, I'll let you introduce the scrum.org team and our, um, uh, I guess, official um, certified um, scrum trainer as well, um, Scott. So Daphne, off to you. All right. Thank you very much, Dennis. It's a pleasure to be here to meet all of you. Uh, my name is Daphne Harris. I'm with scrum.org. Uh, scrum.org is the home of scrum. You know, found, founders of Scrum, Ken Schwaber is at our helm. He's uh, been leading Scrum for uh, over 20 years now and a big part of, of Scrum.org. I'm based in the Boston area where we have our Scrum.org headquarters. Not that I've been in the office for, for several months, but it's not, not too far away from me. Um, my colleague, Matt DeJesus, is here on the conversation. Matt, you're in, in uh, Pennsylvania, right? Yep, I'm in uh, the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania. It's about right. it hour and a half north of Philly and hour and a half west of uh, New York City. And Matt runs our partner program. Uh, Scott is here as a professional scrum trainer in North Carolina. Welcome, Scott. Uh, we may have Donis Marshall join in as well, another professional scrum trainer who's, I believe, currently in California. I know he's, he's um, been mobile and in a few places. Um, but it's great to be here. I've been with Scrum.org for about 10 years, um, and uh, my role is growing our trainer community. So that's what I'm here to, to uh, talk a little bit about and answer questions that you all have. Uh, I am going to share my screen, and hopefully you all can see it. Let me know if you don't. I'm going to be kind of moving between looking at two different monitors here. Uh, is my screen showing? So far, so good. Okay, let me just adjust yep. my view here. Yes. Okay, great. So um, it's great to show you a little bit of our PST community. This is a small glimpse, right? We, we have our uh, events where we bring people together. We hope to get back to in-person. Uh, we call them face-to-face -face global trainer meetings. Here's a photo of a couple of these, these, uh, these meetings that we've had recently. Um, one was in Germany, couple, the other couple are online. Um, just to show you a little bit about, we're about people, we're about bringing people together. We care tremendously about our trainers and having an environment where people get to know each other and share ideas and challenges and, and learn from each other. So community is really important to us. Um, and again, this, this is uh, largely people from Europe in the bottom uh, left photo, and then some people remotely and in, in a couple of other things. We had a, a few women come together for uh, an event recently. So um, community is number one for us. We really care tremendously about our trainer community. There's a lot of things about the PST program that we, we care about. I'm gonna anchor a little bit. I'm gonna just walk us through a little bit of a, a, a visual here, just on why Scrum, why scrum.org, just to give a little bit of an overview here. We're not gonna go deep in this, but I assume you're here because you, you are very familiar with Scrum and, and Agile in, in the world. I, I guess I should ask that, and I cannot see the chat window in my view at the moment, but maybe you could raise your hand or just, you know, put something in. Are, are, are many of you in Agile environments right now? Are you working on Scrum teams or have you supported Scrum teams throughout? And maybe someone who can see the chat. No, it's a little bit of yes, a little bit of no from what I'm seeing so far. 
I can't, I'm sorry that I can't see the, the text in the chat currently. Um, so it sounds like it's a little bit of a mix from the, the, the reactions that I saw initially. So, all right, so that's fair. So why, why Scrum, why Agile? So uh, many, many organizations are moving into Agile practices. Uh, you wanna be able to react to change in the marketplace, you know, a condition like COVID that we're in now, which is obviously, you know, pretty extreme <laughs> to say the least. Um, but organizations, there's a huge drive for being more agile. It started in software development. Scrum is something that started in software development. Uh, the image at the top here is from the State of Agile survey. This one was from, I think, a couple of years ago. Um, the most recent one that they have published. Uh, one percent, you know, um, sorry, 58 percent of these organizations that are doing different agile methods are using Scrum. So Scrum is by far the number one approach. Others are using some sort of a mix in a lot of cases. Uh, and uh, if your organization, if you're supporting organizations in technology and they're not using Scrum, there's a good chance that they're gonna, you know, you're gonna want to look into it and, and see how Scrum can help you. Uh, this in this conversation, we're not gonna be, I'm not gonna be giving details and nuts and bolts on kind of what Scrum is, right? That's for another conversation. Scott is perfect for that as a, as a professional Scrum trainer and somebody who helps people all the time with that. Um, but so anchoring in on, you know. Do you see that Scrum is used in many organizations? I think it's like the latest number that I saw from Forrester was something like 13 million people are having a daily Scrum around the world every day. So Scrum is, is, is happening. Um, why Scrum.org? We are the home of Scrum. So we bring together you know, Ken Schwaber's thought leadership, thought leadership of over 300 trainers uh, and together with training and learning opportunities, certification, there's free, free materials on the website and so on as well. So we've been around since 2000, uh, 2009. Uh, and um, it's, you know, Scrum.org is a very highly respected organization. So there's a lot of good reasons to be with Scrum.org. Here's a little bit more about our, our data, um, just in terms of, you know, classes taught, people that are, you know, learning Scrum. We've got a community of 344 uh, currently. It's a, it's a really vibrant global community. Um, the courses that we offer, are, are, you know, go along with these certifications. So I didn't pull in uh, more slides there. But for this, the roles in Scrum, Scrum Master, Product Owner, Developer, we have courses for each of those. We have some additional courses that get into more supplemental um, pieces like Agile Leadership. If that's something you're involved in, coaching leaders, there's a, we have a professional Agile Leadership course. We have a professional scrum with Kanban for those organizations that are using the two together um, and some advanced level courses that go along with some of these things, scaling and, and other things. Um, the, the starting point, which we're mostly gonna be talking about here is probably professional scrum master. That is the bulk of the conversations I have. People are kind of, you know, in that scrum master role, they're supporting teams, they're supporting the organization and uh, wanting to look at the training process. So we'll kind of anchor things there a little bit, but if you've got, more of a developer experience or that product owner experience, I'm very happy to work with you and I can answer questions around that as well. I've put in a few, um, a few pieces around you know, the community and what you get from being you know, a scrum.org trainer, but I'd like to open things up to Scott actually, just to not put you on the spot, but give you a couple minutes to talk a little bit about what being a professional scrum trainer is for you, what value you get out of being a PST. And then we can got, go through the the path to become a PST a little bit from there. All right, thank you, Daphne. Awesome. Ah, the value to me for being a PST. Several many different things. Um, I guess the main thing is really just to help organization really use Scrum to create amazing products. And it's not so much about amazing products itself that is that I find is the problem. It is the people. And I like Scrum because it really touches on and includes the people, the amazing people who are building these amazing products. And that is super duper fulfilling for me. Uh, there are three accountabilities on, on a, in the Scrum framework. You have a product owner, which could be, or looked at as product centric. Uh, you have the developers, uh, which are responsible for building whatever it is uh, that we wanna build. And then you have the Scrum master. Uh, to me, I found that that is my sweet spot as a trainer, uh, training those individuals to be better scrum master, to focus on the people who build the amazing products. And there's a whole lot more I can say, um, but I will stop there 
make sure we have time enough for questions. All right. Well, you're here for the duration of this conversation. So if people have questions, want to ask you specifically about uh, what you get out of Swarm.org and the PST program, we can get into that a little bit more. Um, I'm going to jump over to looking at um, the what we look for in PSTs, just to anchor us there in you know, kind of what scrum.org's expectations are, we'll then go through a little bit more of a path, you know, in the process. So we do look for experience. That's number one. You know, we want trainers who have lived this stuff that they're teaching about. And so um, we're looking for people who've been hands-on as scrum masters or as product owners or as developers um, in a scrum environment. So to, to teach it well, we know you have to understand the theory and be able to explain things well. So good communication skills are obviously really important. But the hands-on stories is a huge part of what trainers bring. What our trainers bring is how does this work in the real world? So we're in complex environments. Scrum works well in complexity. So there's a lot of unknowns. We're trying something out. We're seeing what we can learn from it. We're adjusting. Um, so transparency, inspect, and adapt are three very common words we want you know to hear everybody talk about when they're talking about scrum uh, and uh, this is um, you know we, we look for people who've dealt with a lot of that and have been change agents and have helped bring about successful scrum implementations because we see so many dysfunctions are very common it's a very simple framework but it's really hard to do in in real world complex situations so there's a lot that we look for experience, communication skills, teaching skills, and then around the community aspect. I mentioned at the start, community is really important to us. Uh, we care about people who have kindness and they want to help people. And that doesn't mean you're, you know, you just want happy people and, and um, you know, give them whatever they want. It's, it's teaching, there's some firmness to it, teaching people what, what they need to do and address some hard challenges. Scrum provides, as I mentioned, a lot of transparency so we help people shine the light on problems, really address those head on. Sometimes that's, you know, carefully, slowly. It's not like you have to do everything in a big bang, all, all at once approach. But being able to drive change in a kind way is, is ultimately effective. And kindness is something we really care about in our community and some humility and, you know, and, and some of those things. So that's a little bit about what we look for in the PST path. I'm gonna zoom out and show you a little bit of the journey to become a PST. So this is really much more, what, is it, what does it mean? I wanna be a PST now. So I, you know, I'm interested, I'm interested in this path. What do I do? And so this is a visual that shows a little bit about that, um, that path. Um, it's a learning journey. Um, you, you know, I bet many of you are asking, how long does it take, right? I, just, I always get that question, so I assume it's on some of your minds. Um, the average back in 2019, kind of before we were into COVID, was a little over a year uh, for people to become a PST. Now things are a little bit whacked, but we'll see what we get back into coming, coming out of this uh, situation we're in. Um, there's, uh, you know, again, a lot of expectations that we have from trainers. So I kind of started there to anchor us in what we're looking for. And uh, there's a lot of learning that most people have along the way, because they, you may be very familiar with Scrum in your organizations. And as I said, some of you, you know, brought in at the beginning, you're, you're not, you're learning, you're in project management or doing some other things and looking to bring Scrum in. So the experience is kind of before all of this. Once you've got that hands-on experience, then there's a lot of pieces in this path. Um, and, and people, whether they become PSTs or not, generally tell me very firmly, like they get a lot of value out of this process because they're learning a lot throughout the way. You'll see that along the journey, there's a, a number of feedback loops, right? Scrum is all about feedback loops. So um, we start with the experience. So deep experience in the role, you know, and I, oh, I'm gonna lean a little bit on the Scrum Master piece, because that's probably where most people come from. If you've been in that project manager role, Scrum Master's, you know, somewhat different from that, but a lot of people might come from a project management background, so that's pretty common. Um, Hands-on helping teams, a member of the Scrum team, supporting the organization, supporting product owners, and really supporting the developers and that whole Scrum team and being effective at delivering value, right? We're trying to focus on goals um, so you've got that experience, you've got teaching experience. So we're looking for people who have done some teaching before. Um, these days, most of our teaching is online. Uh, so what is it like to engage learners in an online experience? Do you have visual support? Do you have exercises and things that you're engaging people? Obviously our material provides a lot of that, 
Uh, and one thing I didn't say at the start is one thing about professional scrum trainers is you're teaching our material. So you may teach some of your own courses. If you do, if, you, if you're a professional trainer and you teach your own material, that's great. Continue to do that. We don't and in any way put any restrictions on the kinds of things that trainers can teach. But when you're teaching professional scrum material, you're using our courseware. So we create it, we cur curate it, uh, we maintain it. Trainers can provide op uh, feedback and help move the direction of the course in, in different, different ways if you're so inclined. Many people do engage in that. Um, but you can also kind of take it off the shelf and, and, and start teaching it uh, as well. So um, we want to have people that are experienced with the, the, the um, storytelling aspect. So being able to bring yourself in as a practitioner and engaging students in their learning. So that's kind of the foundational pieces. To get started in the path, we do start with um, assessments. Um, but let me ask before we get into that, any questions on the general stuff that we've covered so far? around scrum.org and you know this being a PSD. Yeah, Jeffrey, I see you have a question. Uh, so I should have uh, read the invitation, but I just saw Scrum and immediately uh, like was interested. Um, do you have any resources if you're just trying to get started uh, with Scrum? Because I'm a UX designer. And I just feel oh, like fantastic. knowing Scrum or Agile would uh, add like to my skill sets. Um, so now from what I'm understanding, this is more for if you've already had experience as a scrum master uh does scrum.org have like resources if you want to just get started okay yes i'm so glad you asked that and i, I appreciate you jumping in yeah my again my role here is to grow our trainer community and so if you're interested in being a trainer now or maybe that's further down the line you'll get some good information about what that path is but yes yeah, scrum.org has a bunch of materials. We have um, uh, learning paths for different roles. So if you're interested in that Scrum Master role, the Scrum Master learning path has tons of materials. Maybe Matt or Scott can drop in a few links here into the chat. Um, Scott is a professional Scrum trainer, so he'd be happy to work with you. Obviously, there's 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 others, uh, lots of opportunities to learn about Scrum through our website for sure. Okay. And, uh, We're in the right place. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to interject too, uh, Jeffrey. So if you go to the members section of the Blacks and Technology website, um, you'll see the programs that we have and discounts available if you wanted to pursue a Scrum Master certification or the other Scrum certifications. Uh, we do provide discounts and uh, Scott is one of our um, certified trainers there. Okay, I'll reach out. Thank you. I appreciate it, Dennis. Yep. Fantastic. Any other questions at the moment? Um, hi. Yes, I had hi. a question. I was wondering if, because um, I know you said it takes about a year to become a, a scrum trainer. I was wondering if that year included like outside, um, outside uh, or like external scrum experience, basically. So the that's, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, we generally look for about four years of experience to get started in this process. So that I appreciate that you asked that and that I didn't make it very clear on, on my on my presentation here. So I'll look at expanding that. Um, we want to see people that have had a lot of hands on experience, ideally different different teams, different people, different organizations can help as well, maybe different products. Uh, and um, you know different experiences. So we're looking for the trainers to now have a wealth of experience, like Scott brings, for instance, in different environments that you know can help relate to students. So the the one year of becoming a PST, and there's a range in there. There are a few people who've come through in just a few months. There are some people who can take you know several years to be a PST. Um, not everybody is ultimately invited because there's a lot of things that we do look for, but we try and provide a lot of support along the way. So the year or so is once you've got all that experience, then the journey. So would it help if I walk through what that journey looks like a little bit? Maybe answer some questions along the way. So feel free to jump in if you have questions, um, but let me start by talking about, a bit about what that path looks like. So once you've got the years of experience as a Scrum practitioner, as a Scrum master, and you've done some teaching, uh, there's a, you know, there's a, a path at scrum.org. So it's become a trainer on scrum.org. I'll, I can, I can just, somebody can drop that link in. Um, you can look a little bit about what the application process looks like. Um, but, uh, we start with online assessments. 
So um, the professional Scrum Master One, that's a certification you can earn through scrum.org. You can earn it through taking a class and then demonstrating your knowledge through assessment. You can also learn it without a class if you've got other ways to get that, that, that knowledge. We've highly encouraged the classes because they're the best way to really learn and get, you know, trainers bring in so much real world context as well. Um, so in any case, uh, taking a PSM-1 assessment for the Scrum Master Path is the starting point. We look for a high score there. If you're interested in that, if the, if the experience that we've talked about so far, you've got several years hands-on as a Scrum Master or product owner or developer, and you're really interested in getting started, let me know, uh, and I can offer you a discount kind of to get started with um, the PSM-1 assessment. Um, again, that's for, for people who are really interested in this trainer path and you've got the experience. From there, we look at an application. So we're looking for a high score. We're looking for an application where you now bring in your ex examples of what it's been like to be a scrum master. So that's a storytelling opportunity. It's um, clear, short stories is what we look for. Like we want trainers to bring into the classroom. Um, and we want to hear maybe half a dozen or so examples of what are problems, what are challenges that your scrum teams faced that prevented them from delivering, you know, great value. Um, and what are things that you did as a change agent to help improve that situation? It's not always like, what did you do as the hero? Single-handedly, I did X, Y, Z, but, you know, maybe you brought some data to a particular group of people or you you know you raised a question or you did you know various things that you did and what what happened as a result of that so we want to hear some of those stories um what has it been like as a scrum master for you how have you helped deal with some challenges bring about some successful scrum we want our trainers who've experienced lots of dysfunction challenge failure like oh, that's so important in, in being able to help other people and to have that learning yourself. But we also want trainers who've experienced real successes with Scrum. So what it's like to actually get out there and deliver value regularly and delight customers with what you're producing. Um, so, you know, we want trainers who've experienced all of that and can bring that into to the story. So the, the application is a place to do that. We also look for a powerful Scrum success story, which is not so much like, here's how I got Scrum to work in an organization and much more, here's a real impact that Scrum had on an organization. You know, here's how they, you know, were struggling, they got new customers, they, you know, in one case I talked to somebody, they were, you know, it was around um, cancer patients with their product. And it was like, here's how we, you know, helped to help patients detect cancer earlier and really, you know, save lives and, you know, some real powerful impact. And how did Scrum help bring that about? So some of the things in Scrum that um, led to you know, this, this improvement or this success. So we like to hear that kind of a story in an application. From there, we get into a conversation. So there's again, feedback loops. So sometimes things are, you, know, you might need to take an assessment more than once. You might need to submit a second application depending on uh, you know, kind of how it looks and the feedback. Um, but ultimately we then have a call. Usually it's me, but I have a couple of colleagues that might be involved in the process too, but I usually have calls with trainer candidates um, we'll, we'll want to pull on some of that and we'll, you know, we'll go through some teaching scrum exercises and my goal in all of that is to help give you feedback that's going to help you be successful in this path. So a lot of people come away from that conversation with some ideas of things they might want to think about in terms of the language, because one of the things our scrum trainers do is teach a vocabulary. Scrum has a language, a vocabulary that goes along with it. So, you know, uh, being consistent with that, but also much more than the words themselves, what's, what's underlying them. So we want people to understand the why behind things. So the, the purpose you're trying to achieve, principles and values are really important. So um, there's a lot of feedback in that. Um, and then from there, again, if all looks good, you would be invited to join a candidate community, which we have on Slack. Um, Slack's become very popular for, for people to collaborate, and that's what we are using currently. Um, and it's just a place people get out of it what they bring into it. So if you've got questions, you want to do some, you know, let, let's go through some scrum exercises together. Or let's talk about this scrum topic. You've got a group of people to kind of go through that with. Um, and then from there, there's a train the trainer event. We canceled all of our train the trainer events. They used to be in person. We canceled them in, in during COVID uh, in 2020. We've now started to bring them back as online virtual train the trainer events, just like our classes all used to be in person. Now we've got online virtual train the trainer uh, events, uh, sorry, classes as well. Um, they're, they're live virtual, so it's not recorded. You know, you do participate and there's a lot of 
teamwork and you know collaborating uh we're engaging students so you know expect in our classes and in our train the trainer event you know you're you're talking a lot you're engaging with other people we kind of have a training from the back of the room mindset at scrum.org where trainers um you know are really good at delivering short pieces of content and then giving people an opportunity to dig into that as you know with their own real world experience that you know you all bring in so turn things over to students let people uncover things from their own experience and then bring things back in and make you know land on on key points and key messages so we we, we look for all that the train the trainer event is a way to do that it's usually a three-day event so you're participating in one of our courses some trainer candidates have already been to the courses before that's fine some this is their first time coming to the course that's also fine um, and you know then you're you're doing some teaching back in the train the trainer piece um, let me pause here to see uh, if there's questions. Also, maybe Scott, if you want to jump in and talk a little bit about what this, I don't think we had the candidate community in quite this way at the point when you were in the path, um, but of course there's still candidates that you can connect with. Anything, any questions or anything you'd like to, to share? Um, no, I mean, this is uh, great information. Uh, I would just say to you, don't get so caught up on the time uh as daphne mentioned it would take you approximately a year but that year is based upon your skill set and what you bring to the table you know one of the things i had to work on that i was challenged with is you know before this journey i asked myself can i do it and i, I was unsure because i had a problem talking in front of people who i did not know so what did i do I went and joined Toastmasters to give me practice in regards of talking in front of people I did not know. I mean, I can talk all day long around people who I was comfortable with, blah, blah, blah. But to get out of that box and feel comfortable, that is one of the things that you can see in this roadmap that you want to be challenged with, especially at the train of training, because you're going to have to get up there and actually train on a piece of your knowledge amongst people who you've probably never, ever met at that event. And you have to be comfortable with that. So there is some... You know, get out of your own mind, get out of your own way. You may have to go through that process of, you know, if you're already in Scrum, you might have to go through the journey of, which I was, well, you're already going to be in Scrum to go down this journey in the first place. So you may have to take a step back and do some detox, some relearning and, and learn because the home of Scrum is per Scrum. You may not have ever seen per Scrum in your life before. And you're going to have to unlearn some bad habits. So that one year journey, keep in mind, you know, all those factors are going to be highlighted for you to fix. And that's an individual process, an individual timetable as to how long it will take you to fix that problem. Hey, if you already out there public speaking and you ain't got no problem speaking in front of millions of people, great. That is a plus for you. Because again, at the end of the day, it's about communication. What other questions you may have, anyone? All right. Thanks, Scott. I really like how you brought in detox. I haven't heard that word before, but there's a lot of, as you said, unlearning that often happens because you might have experienced Scrum in your organization or in a few organizations. And, and there's Scrum is a very lightweight framework. You read the Scrum guide, it's well, I think it's now like 13, 14 pages. It's pretty short. Um, but there's tons of complementary practices that are, you know, that teams and organizations are going to need to bring in to help them be successful. And a lot of organizations kind of conflate the two and they think, well, we have to do things exactly this way. We have to use these practices, even if they don't really fit that well for that particular team. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of thinking about what works for us and let's find ways to to make sure we're achieving the results we're trying to achieve. So. You know, every day we come together in Scrum, I mentioned the daily Scrum, 13 million people around the world coming together every day. Some of them are just going around and doing a little status update and like, here's what I'm working on, here's what I'm working on. They're probably not gonna be achieving a whole lot of benefit as compared to those teams where they come together and it's like, okay, we've got the sprint goal. We're gonna look at it again today. We looked at it yesterday. How are we doing towards achieving that? What do we need to do? What problems are in our way? Now, they're probably going to be more, you know, more likely to be successful. So thinking about some of those things, there's a lot of learning opportunities along the way. Um, after the train the trainer event, there's additional assessments. So, you know, there's a few of them, PSM1, PSM2, PSM3 for the trainer path. They come at different points along the way. Um, 
And uh, as a trainer, a candidate, after the train the trainer, you get a discount on the PSM-3 assessment. So there's an opportunity to take it at a discount and you get a second attempt for free because it is a really tough assessment. Um, so, but don't let that scare you now because again, you'll have lots of preparation for that along the way. Um, we have another conversation. Um, there, there may be other pieces that we need to see. Again, there's, we, we customize things depending on the person. So often we might need to see something else coming out of a train the trainer event. It's only a three day event with a group of people. So we might ask for supplemental videos or, you know, an additional conversation or, you know, other ways to look at we didn't quite get to see this, or we asked to see some improvement on this area. So we find additional ways to do that. Um, and that's just, you know, that's part of the, the, the learning process along the way. Um, then there's a peer review, which is again, um, uh, you know, an inspect and adapt process. Many people go through a peer review more than once. Uh, it's a feedback opportunity. Now you're with a panel of PSTs. So you've got maybe, you know, three to five PSTs. You're teaching Scrum, so you're bringing in a topic that you choose, you know, whatever you're comfortable, maybe something you like to teach, and you bring that in. You teach for about, you know, 10, 15 minutes with the, the trainers role-playing students in your classroom and asking you questions along the way. And then we kind of offer you some feedback and we get into more questions. So it's a little bit of seeing what learning is like with you in your, in your virtual classroom and being able to dig into Scrum and see, you know, again, see how you answer questions. We're always looking for people to reinforce professional Scrum, where professional Scrum is about delivering value. It's about high quality. It's about delighting customers. You know, there's a lot of things that go into professional Scrum, principles, values, et cetera. So um, we hope to see, you know, if you're interested to see you in, in, in jumping into this journey. Um, I'm here to answer questions, obviously, now, but along the way, um, you know, I'll, I'll drop in my, my email address here. Uh, okay. It's probably... Can I add mm -hmm. on to what, Brian, to what Scott said? Yeah, Scott. please. Hi, Jonas. Hello. Uh, so I've been a, a trainer with Scrum.org for several years. Uh, and, you know, and I had a considerable background coming into scrum.org, uh, in scrum and in development, but I will say that, uh, despite having considerable background, I'd learned a great deal working with scrum.org. Uh, it was intimidating to first join the organization because you're the new guy. Uh, but I found that scrum.org, uh, Daphne and the whole team is very supportive. Uh, and they did everything that they possibly could to make me feel comfortable and to help me succeed. Uh, so you feel like you're on that journey together uh, when you're, you're not on that journey by yourself. The scum.org team is with you. Uh, the other thing is they have a high bar uh, as far as, you know, they really want you to know scrum.org, scrum, excuse me, very well. And that's great because that gives me the confidence when I speak to an engagement, I speak to a customer, I speak to a group because I have the knowledge from the scrum.org uh, path behind me. Uh, and that gives me that confidence. Uh, so it is a high bar, but that high bar is there for a reason. You will feel like you can talk to anyone. Uh, the other thing is when you go through the process, the scrum.org community is there. Uh, we have the various tools. Uh, we even have asynchronous tools. Uh, we have Slack. We also have the email group, which is asynchronous. So I can read it at 12 o'clock at night when I'm done with doing something else. Uh, and I have found the community more than anything else. Uh, to be really a kind community. They reach out to you, they support you. Uh, I've met a lot of really good friends uh, through scrum.org. And that's the other piece of it that makes you feel like you're on the journey together because the community is there to support you also. Uh, and lastly, when you're, if you're uncomfortable doing presentations, because I know Scott brought that up, I do want to make a comment on this. As part of the scrum.org experience, when you're going through, uh, you will get opportunities to present to your peers. Uh, you get them at the various events, you get one-on-one -on -one 
so we do realize that it isn't just the technical aspect that you have to be comfortable with, it's the presentation. And you will get comments from experienced trainers. Uh, so we're gonna help you with that piece too. Uh, and so it's not just the technical aspect. So when you're ready to deliver, uh, you'll feel like you have it from all sides. You'll have what you need. Uh, and I will say from working with the team, working with scrum.org for all your years, all these years, uh, it's been a great experience. It's been very rewarding. Uh, and when I talk to customers and I use scrum.org as a reference, I just mentioned that people are impressed because they know they have a high bar. So if you're certified with scrum.org, you definitely get respect in the broader community. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Donis. That's great. Really wonderful to get your impact, your, your input. And I appreciate that you found uh, that there's a lot of support in the, in the PST journey and uh, you get a lot of good things out of the community. And it's always great to hear. Um, I am sort of the, the, scrum, the face of scrum.org trainer um, process to a lot of people, but you know, I'm not alone. We've got tons of people in the community as candidates and as trainers to support you along the way. So uh, I hope you, you sound a little bit interested in, in this process and I, I would love to talk to you more about it. I also wanted to say, you know, just um, looking a little bit and we'll, I'll stop sharing in just a minute with this, this screen, but, you know, looking at our picture here, you will see that, you know, it's especially sort of this group picture, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty white, it's mostly men, right? I mean, that's the, the scrum.org community is not as diverse as we would like it to be. And obviously diversity goes into a lot of areas. We have a number, we have, I think it's like uh, 48 countries, maybe something like that um, with PSTs. We're trying to grow in different parts of the world. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people in Africa uh, over the last few months, because we don't have, that's, we don't have any trainers in the whole continent of Africa. And that's something I'm trying to, trying to work on. Um, you know, I've been talking to a lot of women and I, you know, we're really interested in, in supporting people of color in this path as well. There's a lot of opportunities uh, to learn and grow. And scrum.org is, is this, you know, moving into 2021, we've put more of an emphasis on social responsibility is something that our organization is, you know, really putting energy in, and money behind and, you know, other things. So we're, you know, we're helping, uh, there's Agile for Veterans, we're part of Grow with Google, you know, there's a, a number of of different ways that we want to support people um, who have been maybe traditionally disadvantaged or marginalized. And, you know, this, again, it's a great community to be a part of and there's support along the way. So um, anything you want to see on this path, if not, I'll go ahead and stop sharing and we can just do a little more Q&A if you have questions. I'll go ahead and stop sharing. Any, any more questions or anything more you want to hear either from me or, you know, again, Scott and, and Donis, who are professional scrum trainers in the conversation. Well, I'm going to go ahead and drop in my email address um, into the chat. Uh, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me if you have some, some questions. Um, I know that Donis and Scott uh, are doing some work with Blacks in Technology, so you've got you know ability to reach out to them and learn more. Uh, and if you'd like to talk to other people in the in the in the community, in the path, and in different parts of the world, you know, let me know and I can help facilitate that as well. And I'll just add, um, if um, if you didn't hear earlier, um, there is information on both the um, professional Scrum trainer. Uh, as well as uh, becoming a Scrum Master um, certifications on the Blacks Technology website. So um, the member section of the website will have that information and um, we'll be able to connect you with either Scott or Donis. Please, what questions do you have? Oh, come on. Quinsaya, Ms. Smith, uh, Toya. Oh, I know y'all got some questions. Come on, give it to me. I, I mean, see a oh, question in it's chat much time. here. I can see the chat now. So do trainers go to the organizations to help the organization or to help on projects? One of the PSTs want to take that? Donna, you want to take that one? Why don't you jump in, Scott? 
Yes. Do trainers go to the organization to help the organizations or help on projects? Yes, it could be both. I mean, it's not much of that going on now due to COVID and depending upon the organization. But yes, I've had the luxury to work with uh, quite a few manufacturing plants this year to go in and help them optimize their uh, production so that we can get the vaccine out to people. That was super duper exciting. Uh, LCG out in San Francisco. Okay. So yes, but we did all that virtually due to COVID. And I will add, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Uh, yes, uh, both, uh, both consulting and training. Uh, and I have found even during the last year, there's been a ton of interest. COVID hasn't really uh, interrupted my business. Uh, there's so much interest uh, in Scrum uh, that there have been plenty of opportunities. And the other thing too, is you have to remember, Scrum is not just for technology projects. Uh, Scrum has a broader appeal and usage. Uh, and so I've worked with banks, I've worked with universities, uh, I've worked with a lot of companies that aren't technology companies, uh, both from a consulting standpoint, because there are a lot of people doing Scrum wrong. Uh, they do, they think they're doing scrum. Uh, and so there's a lots of opportunities to go into companies and help them do pure scrum. Uh, and if you like to travel, uh, as Daphne knows, I travel a lot. Uh, there's lots of opportunities to travel all over the world, uh, just doing scrum. So there's plenty of opportunities from multiple directions. And I'd like to add one one thing to that um, that I probably should have mentioned at the beginning. For the most part, our I mean, there's a breadth in our trainer community, right? I was mentioned 340 some people. Um, most trainers, most of the PSTs, professional scrum trainers in the program, don't just teach um, by by a lot by a, a landslide. Most are coaches, consultants, practitioners. They're working in organizations or supporting organizations in different ways, and we like that because we want people who bring in. You know, they're, they're fresh real world experiences, not people who were, you know, practitioners 10, 12 years ago, and now have just been straight up teaching in that time. We do have some people that teach more than others. Some teach, you know, close to a class a week or more even. Um, and then some who might just teach, you know, one or two classes a year. And that's where we support that. Um, you know, we want, we see there's a lot of great ways to help teams, people and teams solve complex problems, which is our, our mission at scrum.org. And uh, doing that in organizations is uh, a great way to be effective. Any other questions? Uh, question from James, do some, do some people do it part-time? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, there are some people that are full-time employees in organizations and they do training on their schedule. They might do it internally in the organization as part of what they do. Uh, but again, part of the identity of a PST, I mean, PST is, that's very focused on the training aspect, but there's so much that goes into the PST identity that is really beyond training. I don't know, Scott and Donis, do you want to take that? Yeah. And just with my relationship with a lot of people in the community, uh, some are doing consulting, some are full-time within an organization, uh, some are full-time trainers. Uh, it really depends on what your career goals are. Uh, there is a way that you can leverage Scrum uh, within, your, within your goals. So that, for me, that's the first thing you need to decide is what your career goals are, and then we can fit Scrum into that goal. I will say this, there is a scrum path, scrum masters are in hot demand. And so as I talk to a lot of my clients, they're always hiring, looking for new scrum masters. Uh, and that's kind of an exciting position to be in uh, because there's so many ways that you can interface with the organization and uh, be involved with different people. So uh, if you're looking for a career path, uh, being a scrum master or a product owner is definitely a viable solution. Yeah, very good comments. Yeah, part-time. <clears throat> I, uh, yeah, I'm still a part-time, well, full-time scrum master, part-time trainer. Yeah, I just love doing the scrum master side of things because of the change agent aspect. And 
I do that full time for corporations as a consultant, and then I train on the side. So several ways you can slice and dice it. But as Donis and uh, Daphne were saying, just depends upon, you know, what what's comfortable for you. But the beautiful thing about it is you have options. You know, on LinkedIn, we have, uh, I think I looked at it last week, you have 69,000 Scrum Masters right now that companies are willing to pay for to hire. That's just on LinkedIn. Indeed probably has about 10,000 now. So you will be as busy as, as busy as you want to be. Yeah, that's really, Not. that's really pretty true. And trainers, you know, get, there's marketing support that comes from scrum.org, but there's also, you know, building up your own brand as a trainer, right? Why, why do people want to go to training to you? And it's about your experience that you can bring to them. So those are things to be considering. Did I, did I start to hear someone else jumping in? I see a question about whether you can go into a scrum path directly out of after school. Uh, assuming you get the certification based on your scrum experience. Uh, a lot of the organizations that I mentioned and that I interact with are hiring people out of college uh, into scrum master positions. So this is something that you can pursue as a career uh, right after getting out of the university. Very nice. Yeah, one thing I'll add to Daphne, if for, I know uh, for, for James, I know you said you were still in school for, if you're looking to learn on your own, we do have like Daphne talked about the, the learning pass and, and a lot of free resources on, uh, on our website that you can use. Um, we do also have the open assessment, which is uh, questions, not exactly what you'll find on, you know, the PSM one exam or, or the other exams, but it at least helps you think of how the questions may be asked and what to go back and study if you, you know, didn't get something right or in a certain area. So it helps you with that feedback as well. Um, so we, we try to offer as much as we can free on our website. Um, and a lot of the resources are very good. Like myself, I don't come from a, an agile and, and scrum background. I come from the data center and cloud space and DevOps and, you know, Azure and AWS. Um, and just taking our classes and the free resources, I've learned so much that I take, you know, agile and scrum into my own life uh, and it just makes things better. So it's, it's, it's amazing, but there is a lot of free resources that we have that, that you can use as well if you're interested in learning more. Yeah, I would encourage all of you, if you're in, in technology, you know, this is a great age to be learning about Agile and Scrum specifically because it is, it's, you know, it's so uh, much around the world and continuing to grow. You know, we still see it's been around for 20 years. It's not a fad. It's not going to disappear tomorrow. Um, you know, this is a good area to be in. So the, mo the most, the more that you can learn about Scrum uh, is, is only going to help you in, in, I think, in your careers. Um, and again, if you've got that, you know, the deeper experience, then that's where you talk to me. If you're looking to learn and get started, then that's, you know, Scott and Donis and the scrum.org website is gonna give you lots of good, good stuff. Any other questions? There's one more in there. I don't know if you see the question from Toyin, uh, but it says, um, I'm not sure if this was mentioned, but how can you begin to get scrum experience? Is project management experience considered? You want to that? The first part of that, that's what we would just answer, Dennis. And then uh, is project management experience considered? I would say yes. Uh, and the reason being is for those project managers out there, if I'm a project manager, where do I fit, let's say, on a scrum team? Well, scrum only has three roles, a scrum master, a developer, and a product owner. But if you have that skill set as a project manager, that same skill set is laid out over the Scrum team. For example, when you think about estimating in Scrum, it is developers that do that. The product owners responsible for the product and they doing a lot of collaboration with stakeholders and other folks, as well as developers to make sure that we understand the work we're trying to do. And then you also have the developers. So no, we're not necessarily concerned about time, budget and scope, i.e. the triple constraint. However, that skill set can be transferable in some element of a scrum team. 
if you look at it that way. Again, just trying to give you something that you can compare and create a baseline of how do I fit into this environment? Skill set is very applicable. However, we only have three accountabilities in Scrum. Keep that in mind. Does that help? Perfect. Yeah, the first book that Ken Schwaber wrote, I think, with Mike Beadle was Agile Project Management uh, with Scrum. So, you know, there's uh, Agile Project Management is a big part of, you know, of what, of what Scrum uh, looks at, but it goes beyond the project management. It's a little bit more of a product focus, right? What are we trying to deliver? And let's look at how we can break things down into an iterative and incremental set of, you know, delivering value um, over, over a period of time. So, uh, that's often great foundational experience. And again, a lot of people do um, have that scrum master, Sahari, have project management experience in their background and then move into more of like a scrum master role from there. So it's certainly, it's certainly you know, good, good ways to get experience around product development, delivering value. Um, project management, MBA, project management, and scrum. Question, anyone want to take? Donna, Sky. Uh, James, can you give me more context on that? And does does this the, basically the what you're putting together? Is that what you have, or what is what is your other question there? Project management plus MBA versus project management versus Scrum. I have all of them, uh, and I think that's helpful because now I can talk on many different levels. If I'm talking to a product, let's say project manager, uh, if I talk to another MBA, I can talk to them on a different language and you know on a different scale because I have that knowledge and understanding that background. So I, I think <clears throat> the question, <clears throat> excuse me, the question is more around how much education do I need? I don't know. It's a personal decision, uh, but it can't hurt. But you're just making yourself more versatile if you add project management and MBA and whatever else certification you may deem necessary. You just broaden your horizons. So I would add that uh, this is not a mutually exclusive conversation. Uh, we, we don't have project managers do not have a formal role in Scrum. Uh, but if you're working uh, within an organization or you're consulting with an organization, whatever capacity that you're in, uh, I find very few companies that are not doing Scrum. Uh, so regardless of your career path, if you decide to go project management plus MBA, uh, you're still going to, from a practical perspective, uh, have to know Scrum uh, and having a Scrum certification would be valuable in that capacity. Uh, I would also just wanna add one other thing on a different topic. Uh, that we haven't talked about. Scrum is fun. Uh, I hate being bored. Uh, and, you know, Scrum is always evolving, is always challenging. Uh, and that's kind of why I love it. And so it is a lot of fun working with Scrum. You're always learning new things. Uh, you're learning new people skills as well as technical skills. So it's fun. Uh, and that's always a great reason to do something. Oh, I, see fine, one, yeah. I see one more question here. I think this is going to be our last question in terms of time. So it's a little bit about uh, reporting and expen expected responsibilities. That's a pretty broad question. Who, you know, Scott, Donna, do you want to take anything in terms of, um, you know, expected responsibilities? Maybe that's a good place to start. We're getting close to the time box, but it is, you know, I kind of touch on that a little bit. I started out self-study. I didn't see a professional. Um, I went down the scrum master track to become a professional scrum trainer. And most of that I did self-study. I didn't see a PSM one class until actually I did the train a trainer. Looking in hindsight, I wish I had taken that class early in the process than wait to that point. As Daphne mentioned, you will see that at train a trainer is built in. So just to put that in framework for you, why should you consider taking the class versus self-study? And that's the beautiful thing about scrum.org. You have that choice. We give that to you. But here's the deal. The class and the whole structure is set up. I want you to think about Humpty Dumpty. I'm, I'm assuming that you know the story of Humpty Dumpty. He sat on a wall. But in this process, Humpty Dumpty didn't fall, y'all. As a professional trainer, I'm going to push you off that wall. 
I'm going to watch you break. And then I'm, we're going to put you back together. But this time, now I'm getting ready to tell y'all my age. Y'all see the great, but check this out. Now, for those of you who don't know the six million dollar man series, you're going to probably have to go and research that. Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. And no, Scott pushed Humpty Dumpty off the wall and he failed. We put Humpty Dumpty back together again, but this time it's like the six million dollar man. I want you to think about that transformation, y'all. That is the transformation you will go through, even if you just take a simple class. Or if you want to become a trainer, oh my God, you're going to get a major transformation from what you thought you knew to what you actually know. And then when you get to the end, you're not finished. You're thinking your journey is over. Now is another aha moment. Wow, I still got a lot to learn. Yes, it's a journey, y'all. So I say, forget about the year, forget about six months. It is a journey, <clears throat> not a destination. That would be my two cents before we close out. Thank you, Scott. Well, I've put my email address in. Um, again, I encourage you to reach out if you're interested in the trainer path. If you have colleagues, friends, others you know of, are like, oh, they're really experienced. They might be interested in this. You know, spread the word. I'm always happy to talk to anybody. And again, you've got some great free resources at scrum.org. You've got two professional scrum trainers doing some work for Blacks in Technology. So we hope that you'll get a lot of value um, out of scrum.org. And uh, we're excited to be working with you. And thank you, Daphne. I appreciate you all. Uh, thanks for uh, joining um, Matthew, Scott, and Donitz as well. And uh, if anyone has any questions, like I said, after uh, the event that we didn't address, feel free to uh, reach out to us and uh, we'll get you connected to the right answers. Uh, with that, I'll say thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll be talking soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank Bye. you, Daphne.